again guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are heading back out in the Dark Star once again. Obviously we did take a brief look at the aircraft the other day, we got the Dark Star up to 120,000 feet. As I mentioned during that video I thought it would be good fun to actually try out the challenge and take the aircraft from China Lake all the way across the United States over towards Cape Canaveral. And so in today's flight that's exactly what we're going to do, we're going to take the aircraft across the continental United States, we'll be up at 120,000 feet and tearing our way across the US at speeds in excess of Mach 9. The video should hopefully also act as a bit of a tutorial, we're going to be carrying out the full profile as I say all the way up from China Lake in towards Cape Canaveral and we'll talk through the various procedures and parameters that we're looking to meet as we go. As always guys if you do enjoy the video then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Early morning still here on the ground at China Lake so we're going to go and chase that sun and we'll head our way out towards the eastern coastline of the United States. So we're back in the cockpit of the Dark Star once again on runway 08 here at China Lake. As you can see the sun coming up out towards the east and we're going to chase it down as we make our way over the continental United States. We're all set and ready to go so the part brake can come off, we'll just hold the aircraft on the brakes momentarily. Coming up to full military power on both engines. Lovely howl there from the Dark Star as we come up on the throttles, off the brakes. There's full military power, we'll engage the afterburners. And you can see us getting a big kick in the back there as the afterburners kick in. Just waiting till we come up through 180 knots, which we now have, so coming back on the yeah, stick. Uh, and pitching up for uh, 10 degrees climb here. We do have positive rate, the gear can come up. And we're going to climb at uh, 10 degrees nose up here till we reach Mach 0.9. We that inverter appears to be holding at less than 170 at this time. Roger, on the tank, Dave, less than 170. Just come up through 0.7, you can see the speed absolutely rocketing up, just come up through 450 knots and through 5,000 feet. It's 0.85, so we're just going to gently come back on the stick, we're looking for a pitch now of 20 degrees nose up. By, we want to maintain Mach point nine Stand here in the climb. And there's our 20 degrees. Maintaining Mach point nine nicely, just coming up through 10,000 feet, the landing lights can go off. We're going to maintain point nine now to come up through flight level 350. We'll come out on the range as well on the nav display. Slightly out to the left of our heading, so we'll just roll the aircraft out to the right, 10 degrees. Get ourselves back on heading. Looking good there on the Mach number. And just coming up through flight level 200. Good now on the heading, we'll roll wings level. Just enough time to look outside, just coming through the cloud layer. We should have the high terrain out towards the north. You can see the mountain ranges there just off on our left. It says flight level 240, we've got another 10,000 feet here in the climb before we start our manoeuvre to accelerate the aircraft. Just pitching the nose back down there to maintain Mach 0.9. Of course the indicated airspeed there rolling off as we maintain a constant Mach number here in the climb. Got it operator, get procedures. Roger, I'd like to make my quick voice check starting with shape. So it's flight level 350, we'll roll out to the right. We'll let the nose drop through the horizon. The aim of the manoeuvre here is to get the nose down and have the aircraft accelerate through Mach 1. The tutorial calls for 20 degrees nose down, but I find 10 degrees to be a little bit better overall. Otherwise we lose a lot of height in the manoeuvre for no real reason. Up through Mach 1, so we'll roll back towards wings level. And there's wings level, so we'll start pulling the nose again back through the horizon. Obviously pulling fairly gently here, you can see we're already doing 1.7G even with a uh, relatively low rate of pitch, but of course with the high speed there pulling a lot of G. 
Forward. Just down through five, 250, so we lost about 10,000 feet there in the manoeuvre. And again, we're slightly out on the right of our heading, so we'll roll this time 10 degrees out to the left to get ourselves back on heading. Just going to pitch the nose ever so slightly above the horizon. We want the speed to continue to increase here, but we don't want to lose any more altitude. Coming back up through flight level 250, and still above the weather here. You can see we are coming back onto our heading, and the speed increasing nicely there, coming through Mach 1.6. We want to be up through Mach 3 before we fire up the scramjets. Back on our plant heading, so we'll roll wings level. And still doing around 4,000 feet per minute rate of climb, speed building nicely. Just coming up through 700 knots. And you can see we've almost burned our way through uh, about two thirds of our, our fuel tank there. There's Mach 2. Again, waiting until we're through Mach 3 before we engage the scramjets. And coming up through flight level 300. That vertical speed continuing to increase there, so just pitching the nose down. We really want to prioritise speed over altitude at the moment, just so we can get those scramjets in as quickly as possible. That being said, the quicker we climb, obviously the uh, quicker we're going to see that Mach number rise as well, but no issues there, coming up through Mach 2.6, 2.7 now. So we'll get the nose pitched up towards 10 degrees. There's Mach 3, so we can engage the scramjets. Fuel supply can go on. And we'll hit engage. You can hear the scramjets lighting off. And again, a big kick up the back there as they fire up. Up through flight level 400. Climbing like an absolute rocket now. The scramjets just come up to 100% power. Got over 50,000 feet per minute rate of climb. Indicated airspeed rolling back, but again, we're expecting that. So just continuing the uh, climb here at 10 degrees nose up, we'll wait until we're up through flight level 900. Then we can start pitching the nose down. So just coming up on Mach 5, leaving the uh, ground and indeed the weather well below us now, up through flight level 700. And looks like we just about burned our way through our, our fuel tank there in the climb. Still got plenty of fuel for the arrival into uh, Cape Canaveral later on. And just coming up on 90,000 feet, so pitching the nose down. Again, gentle nose down pitch here. We don't really want to go more than minus 1G. Up through Mach 9. Just coming up through flood of 110. And that vertical speed now rolling off nicely. Auto stations, attention, this is Cape Retro. We have picked up the count at 1441. So just coming through uh, flight level 114. And doing about 6,000 feet per minute rate of climb, which is pretty good. We'll just finesse the Dark Star the rest of the way up towards flight level 120. Looking good on the heading. We've got about uh, 350 miles there to run towards the next waypoint. And there's flight level 117. So again, we'll just reduce that vertical speed right down. So that's us establishing the cruise, doing Mach 9.1. Again, the view outside, pretty spectacular. The world certainly goes by pretty quickly when you're doing Mach 9. You can see as well we've got some heat vapour there coming off the uh, aircraft. We are now about three times higher than your average jetliner cruisers and over two times higher than even Concorde cruisers. So again, the Dark Star, pretty phenomenal piece of machinery. Anyway, it is of course a pretty special view from this sort of an altitude, so we're definitely going to head outside as we tear our way across the United States. As usual, I'll come back to you again as we're approaching the top of descent point and we'll make a pretty sporty approach 
into Cape Canaveral. Trajectory through Max Q is good. The Astro is all go. Roger. Roger, you're through Max Q. How's your communications, Capcom? Having the pressure right. coming down by seven. Okay, flight very smooth now. How are you, uh, environment? Roger, flight go, flight go for Trajectory still looks good. We're a little high on flight path. Roger. How do you look, Rain State? Cabin pressure is high. Uh, Rain State is one. Good. Okay. Cabin holding at Roger. 6 Cabin here. pressure, Cabin right. pressure right. holding at 6.1. I understand. 6.1. That's affirmative. Do you read Bermuda? Roger, read you loud and clear. Roger, read you loud and clear also. Oxygen 78, 102. E, they're building to six. Roger, reading you loud and clear. Flight path looks good. Pitch 25, stand by for Pico. Roger, Pico. Astro confirms Pico. Roger. Let's see the tower go. I saw the smoke go by the window. Roger, we confirm staging on TM. Roger. How are you, Sergeant? Go. Still have about one and a half G. I'm an environment. Go, flight. Right. Still you go. We still go. We lost the pitch scanner probably, but still go condition. All right. There's the computer. We've lost right the pitch there. scanner. Uh, still go condition. Right way out. Tower, 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 We confirm on TM. Okay, so we're just coming up the beam Tallahassee, which is just off on our left out towards the north. You can see there on the primary flight display the panhandle of Florida, so we are ready to descend. Roughly 170 miles out from Cape Canaveral at the moment. We're going to start pitching the nose down to around minus 10 degrees. So just nosing over, we don't really want to go more than minus 1G here as we make the manoeuvre. And as soon as we get the nose down towards 10 degrees, we'll cut the power. You can see we're just coming up on Mach 10. So looking good there now on the pitch, we'll kill the throttles. And of course the speed rolling off pretty rapidly there as we do so. Coming back on the stick again to bleed off some speed, we don't want to pitch up by more than 3G in the manoeuvre. And you can see we are slightly out to the left here of our planned course, so we're going to roll the aircraft out to the right. Just wait until we come back through Mach 5. And there's Mach 5, so once again pitching down to around 10 degrees nose down. We're coming on the range on the nav display. And showing about 80 miles to run inbound towards Cape Canaveral. Just coming up through 65,000 feet. There's back four. Just wait until we come down through 50,000 feet before we come back up on the engines. And tracking direct now to waypoint Hodub, that should put us in nicely for a straight approach onto runway 13 at Cape Canaveral. You can hear the main engines there coming back online, so we'll come up on the power. Looking to maintain around 500 knots. And now that we have conventional engine power again, we can kill the scrams. Fuel supply can go off. So tracking towards Hodub, just coming up on 50,000 feet. Now we're just going to continue to come up there on the main engine power to maintain around 500 knots here in the descent. So 40 miles on the range, showing about 30 miles to hold up. Pretty happy with the profile for the time being. You can see the coastline there off out of the left window. Still above the weather at the moment. And we've got 20 miles to run towards Hodab now, about 30,000 feet to lose. 
obviously we've got a pretty high vertical speed here, we're doing about uh, 15,000 feet per minute rate of descent. And again, just coming up on the engine power to maintain that 500 knots, more or less, we'll reduce our vertical speed as well. Capcom, take procedures, how do you read? Roger, how do you read? Read you loud and clear. Roger, Wilbur and Capcom, take procedures, how do you read? Wilbur Capcom, read you loud and clear. Roger. Roger. So it's 30,000 feet. And we've got 12 miles now to run towards Hodub. After that it's going to be Waypoint Giggle. In terms of our fuel state, we've still got about uh, half of our forward capacity there on board for the conventional engines, and coming through flight level 250. Entering in here on a bit of a dogleg for a uh, right hand base onto runway 13. That's 20,000 feet. We'll get the landing lights on a little bit ahead of time here. And again, just coming back off the throttle, letting that speed bleed back to 500 knots. Once we come over waypoint Hodub, we'll come further back on the throttles, so let the speed start to reduce further for the approach. Seven miles now to run towards Hodub, coming through 13,000. Pretty happy with where we are at the moment in terms of the profile. We'll start our turn now onto final. And as I say, we'll continue to reduce the speed. Coming back to around 300 knots now as we come down final approach. There's 10,000 feet. You can just see the runway now on the primary flight display, putting the flight path vector there on the touchdown zone. Speed rolling off nicely, vertical speed around around 8,000 feet per minute. And just came over waypoint Giggle. Got about 10 miles now to run towards Cape Canaveral. Come all the way back to idle power. Just wait until that speed goes below 300 knots. And there's 300, we'll take the gear down. Going to maintain around 250 knots as we come down final approach. Looking for a V approach of 200 knots. 3,000 feet. Hopefully, now you can make out the runway as well on the primary flight display. Looking good on profile. Mark. Uh, Roger. Uh, GET and GMT clock are in sync. Roger. On this thing. Anton has contact at 1557. So we're just coming down through 2,000 feet, speed's 230 knots. We'll let that continue to bleed back towards the approach, 200 knots. As you can see, I've got the flight path vector just below the runway threshold at the moment. We want to fly a nice shallow approach in the dark star. The aircraft doesn't behave particularly well in the flare, not much in terms of elevator authority to uh, null out any descent rate. That being said, we do want to be careful not to overflare the aircraft, otherwise we'll find ourselves back up and airborne once again. Just coming through a thousand feet, and confirm we do have gear down, three greens. Speed's looking good, slightly out to the left of the centre line, so just correcting for that. There's 500 feet. And just starting our flare manoeuvre. Cutting the power. Let's touch down onto the brakes. And just keeping the aircraft straight there on the runway centre line. Getting ourselves slowed down. And back through 90 knots. We can ease up on the braking now. And we'll roll through to the end of the runway. So there you go guys, I do hope you enjoyed a more comprehensive outing in the Dark Star. 
Once again, I think a very cool and interesting addition to the sim, certainly the best part of the Top Gun Maverick update overall. Definitely some potential there for some more interesting flights in the future, but I really enjoyed our transcontinental US hop today. I certainly hope that you did as well. As always, if you did, please consider giving the video a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. As ever, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It is very much appreciated. I hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.